Hi guys, slightly quiet day in here because I'm filming in the middle of the night and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of, or at least starting my quick review of, uh, The Unexpected Guest, a novel by Agatha Christie, adapted as a novel by Charles Osborne. So basically Christie wrote the play and then Osborne is one of the two official, um, you know, novel writers that the Christie estate has authorised. So as always I'm going to read the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs and then we'll share overall thoughts and rating at the end. So The Unexpected Guest, Agatha Christie. On a foggy day in South Wales, Michael Starkwedder runs his car into a ditch and seeks help at the nearest house. Slipping into the study through an open window, he finds Lord of the Manor Richard Warwick dead in a wheelchair with his beautiful wife, Laura, standing over him with a gun. The scene smacks of vintage Christie, and it is. Dame Agatha wrote The Unexpected Guest for the London stage, where it was successfully produced in 1958. Now, Christie biographer Charles Osborne has novelised the play so that her fans can experience the same thrill audiences at the Duchess Theatre felt over 40 years ago. Did Laura Warwick really kill her husband? Michael can't bring himself to believe it and soon begins concocting an elaborate plot to fake the time of death and divert suspicion from the widow. But, Starkwed but Starkwedder can't foresee where this tangled web will lead and whom it will ultimately ensnare. And neither will you as the Grand Dame of Deception works her magic and provides us with yet another brilliantly twisted puzzle and unexpected denouement. That's kind of not true because Michael immediately believes that she killed her husband. But he just likes her so he kind of helps her to hide it. <laughs> so we get this sort of bit of motivation here from this character. She shook her head in perplexity. You don't know what you're doing, she told him. I know very well what I'm doing, he answered. I'm making myself an accessory after the fact. But why? asked Laura. Why? Starkweather looked at her for a moment before replying. Then, yes, why? he repeated. Speaking slowly and deliberately, he said, for the simple reason, I suppose, that you're a very attractive woman, and I don't like to think of you being shut up in prison for all the best years of your life. Just as horrible as being hanged by the neck until you're dead, in my view. And the situation looks far from promising for you. Your husband was an invalid and a cripple. Any evidence there might be of provocation would rest entirely on your word, a word which you seem extremely unwilling to give. Therefore, it seems highly unlikely that a jury would acquit you. And uh, we get a lot of... Uh, I guess I'll say the word. He uses the word retarded a lot. Um, this came out in 1999. Even here, you feel as though he knows he probably shouldn't be using it. Because the character goes, very affectionate and sweet, but he isn't quite like other people. I mean, he's what they call retarded. Oh yeah, and then we casually get dropped into conversation that Richard ran over a child. And uh, apparently when it happened, um, somebody said to him, You don't deserve to have got off Mr Warwick. You know you were driving much too fast. It's a shame about that poor child. And then Richard said, Oh, forget it. I've made it worth your while. Anyway, that's one... Anyway, what's one brat more or less in this overcrowded world? He's just as well out of it all. It's not going to spoil my sleep, I assure you. No wonder someone killed him. Uh, we get a reference to the poet John Macefield as well, which is cool because I used to live in an estate um, where the, the main road, the road I lived on was called Macefield Drive and that was named after John Macefield. Get this rather sexist remark, uh, for a woman you're really remarkably good at keeping a secret. Although later on we do, the conclusion is essentially that women are better at murder than men. We have here, he was probably a bully at school. He was attractive to women of course. Women are always attracted by bullies. And he took a lot of his sadism out in his big game hunting, I dare say. What the fuck was that? What are you doing, cat? Just here is where we have a note on the plays of Agatha Christie, which I thought was interesting. Um, just some of the thoughts. So, Alibi, the earliest Agatha Christie play to reach the stage, opening at the Prince of Wales Theatre, London, in May 1928, was not written by Christie herself. It was an adaptation by Michael Morton of a 1926 crime novel, The Murder of Roger Ackroyd, and Hercule Poirot was played by Charles Lofton. Christie disliked both the play and Lofton's performance. It was largely because of her dissatisfaction with Alibi that she decided to put Poirot on the stage in a play of her own. The result was Black Coffee, which ran for several months at St Martin's Theatre, London, in 1930. And then I wanted to share this bit because I thought that um, Graham would be interested in this. Graham Sillers reads books because... Uh, he recently read this. He actually got it from my eBay store. Um, so she's talking about Aknart and it says, It was not a murder mystery, but the story of the ancient pharaoh who attempted to persuade a polytheistic Egypt to turn to the worship of one deity, the sun god Aten. Aknarton failed to reach the stage in 1937 and lay forgotten for 35 years until, in the course of spring cleaning, its author found the typescript again and had it published. So yeah, all in all, I mean, 
Charles Osborne isn't the greatest um, at writing like Christie. I think Sophie Hanna is a better uh, like put choice really to kind of continue Christie's legacy. The story and the plot itself is fantastic. I actually think this would be amazing as the play version because you just get like hit by twist after twist after twist and um, I think it just really would really hold your attention. Uh, I mean, yeah, Osborne's writing, as I say, isn't the greatest, but it's enough to carry the story. So overall, I'd probably give it like 3.75 out of 5. And would recommend it if you're a serious Christie fan, but obviously if you're new to Christie, you'll want to start with some of Christie's stuff and not go with this. So there we have it, that's what I've made of The Unexpected Guest uh, by Charles Osborne and Agatha Christie. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book, if you read it. Hit the like button if you've enjoyed, enjoyed this video, hit subscribe for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot, bye bye.